Hello, everybody, and welcome to our virtual webinar with Susan DeLis. I'm Philip Hess, the textile manager at John Roselli and Associates. We are open and hoping to see you all here in our showroom soon. Today with me is Susan DeLis of one of the newest collections that we have added to the Roselli showroom. Hello, Susan. How are you? Puppy dog, who I've been asked to show so this is Otty who may or may not behave I feel I'm sitting next to an unexploded bomb but we, we're, we're prepared in case she misbehaves but we're, we're good thank you very good and great to be with you. It's great to have you here now you've had quite the exciting journey through your career by starting out in law doing a fellowship in Boston sparking an interest in textile and cultivating that passion into something global that has created a beautiful collection of textiles. Can you tell us a little bit about how you travel through Cairo? I have a whole list here. Cairo, Istanbul, Jerusalem, Palmyra, to name just a few, and how those helped you establish yourself as a publicized textile designer and a very successful career in interior design. I have to say, like many things in my life, I didn't have a plan. I sort of fell into things. I pursued the things that I loved and I traveled to the places I was interested in. I was sort of one thing led to another. You mentioned Palmyra. I was in, decided to, I spent a lot of time in Cairo and Marrakesh. I decided, okay, well, let's go to Syria. And then we were, we, we flew to Jordan because we couldn't fly into Syria. And then we took a taxi overnight into uh, up to Damascus and then I bought textiles in Damascus. This was a long time, about 30 years ago, when it was very difficult to get in there. And we, I took a, a, a street taxi from Damascus through the, towards the Iraqi border to Palmyra to go and see that and we were surrounded by wild dogs and so on. And it was, it was an adventure. And I think I have felt like that with my textiles. I had no plan to start. I, as you say, I studied law, I studied in the States. So I've lived in lots of places, but I was brought up with a very sort of academic background. And I thought when I started this 10 years ago, sorry, this is Ossie joining in. Um, I thought, you know, let's do something different. I'd followed a very structured, very um, academic life in a sense, a law firm is very structured. And I had been working for investment funds in Cairo for 15 years before I started this. And I there I was absorbing a lot. I was visiting mosques and caravanserai and felucas on the Nile and all sorts of amazing things and absorbing that all the time and always looking at textiles around me and always collecting. Everywhere I've been, I have collected textiles and artifacts. I worked for a while in Budapest and collected porcelain there. I would go each trip and buy another teacup and saucer from the Heron factory in Budapest. So when I started this, it was because of the Egyptian revolution. I could no longer go back to Cairo. And I um, thought, let's just try something different. And I've taken that very kind of, I'd like to think fresh and experimental approach to textiles. I had no training where it, when I started. So I was looking at the things I collected and thinking, you know, I really love this, but I can't get enough of it too. People would start buying, had started buying for me and I couldn't get enough to cover a sofa. I would have something, you know, that size or that size. And they'd... That's great. With, you mentioned that you have no textile background at all as far as designing. That's amazing. Can you talk us a little bit through? Behind me right now is a number of designs, very successful ones uh, that we have hanging here in the Roselli showroom. That how you go, your process in going from a swatch you've collected somewhere in the world, then working with the artisans to develop into something that you can sell by the yard. I was starting out to try and create textiles. I thought, do I do prints or weaves? And I looked at both and the minimum order for a print is 100 meters usually and um, the minimum order for a weave I phoned around a lot of places and one place answered which happened to turn out to be pretty much the one of the best weavers in England it's a family-run business which is very nice for me also I like working with family-run businesses and businesses with a, a tradition so I'm being a bit hit by my dog um, but the and they let me experiment so I didn't know about Jack, I knew of Jacquard looms, but I didn't know about fabric construction or picks or picks or floats. And there was all this kind of arcane vocabulary 
that I had to learn as, as I was doing it. And I was able to experiment with colour and learn the parameters, the constraints of weaving, and also push them to technically do things that they hadn't done. So you can see different three different weaves there behind you. I can see um, a, a, this, this Tangier stripe, which is a reversible stripe. Yeah, I can see, yeah. <laughs> I can see Constanza behind you, which is another weave, different construction. And then Demetra, which is a kind of, for me, a very exciting weave based on an African textile. So how can you get a hand woven textile woven on a, room, a loom somewhere in Ghana and transport that into Western construction, but keep some of the, the feel of that. So that was a challenge and exciting. So it's been a process very much of experimentation and a journey for me that I still feel I'm very much on and I love doing as well. I really enjoy. Well, your passion shows through in it all and the journey seems to be quite successful. You've been with the Roselli showroom for three months since we launched you here in New York. And are we seeing a growing following for you among our elite customers? And we're quite excited that today on this webinar, for the first time, we're going to be showing your newest collection. This will be the first time shown on this webinar and it'll be hanging in the Roselli showroom. Take it away, team. Ta-da! <laughs> There we go. I love it. I love it. Wow. Fantastic. So I, I'm thrilled that, yeah, so I'm thrilled to be can, working with, sorry. Thank you. Can you talk us through the development behind this, how you see it being used, anything and everything about it? Last year and the year before in Boston, and I saw how the light affected things and the palette that I use, and I saw that people were interested in fresher colors also but equally I wanted to do something here that kind of as we came out of COVID we've all had such a bad time and I thought let's bring all that together I wanted to do something cheerful and uplifting and I, I have to say that the colors don't necessarily in my photography on Instagram and generally are not pick, picked up as well as they might be by a monitor they're very fresh the, the names are Persian yellow rose pink apple green and they're the colors but that viewers should be thinking of. They're bright. You can see them in the background here with the pillows with me, maybe better, where they're kind of, I don't know if you can see, they're kind of bright, bright kind of, there's a, that's a better picture, but kind of brighter colors and, and fresh and cheerful and uplifting. And the pomegranate symbolizes long life and fertility and happiness and lots of positive things. And I just thought, let's have something really cheerful and uplifting for now. And it feels very, now and very positive as well. And it's great to launch it through Roselli. That's great. And now you have it as a coordinate stripe that, uh, I don't have the stripe up behind me, but it has a small coordinate to make a full story with. Yes, it does. So the, the, the grenadine, the pomegranate behind you comes in these three colors of Persian yellow, rose pink and apple green. And it, it's reversible. So you can see all six colors, the three fronts, which are darker and the three with the, the white, almost white motif of the pomegranate on the front. And then you reverse it. So you see the lighter side with the, um, with the, the, the color of the, the pomegranate in a pink or a green or a yellow. Um, and I have an Imani weave, which is my sort of semi plain fabric, which is a very versatile, very useful, and I have done that in matching colors. I remember, I, I, I hope I'm allowed to say this, but a client introduced me to Bunny Williams who introduced me to Jonathan and Bunny has bought some, I think for her own home and said, you know, do more Imani. So if Bunny says do it, I'm doing more Imani. So I think, you know, it's great advice, great feedback, very encouraging. So we're, we're doing Imani basically. And it looks, you haven't got it there because it's literally as fast as we get it off the, off the loom, we're sending it to you. So it's been a kind of a big process of getting it all made in time. So, but it's, it's, it, the colors are beautiful and they all coordinate and they're very versatile. You can use it for upholstery, drapes, pillows, headboards, you know, you name it, it's, it's usable for it. That's great. And then people often ask, well, how does the designer see it being used? And that's great. And the Imani uh, stripe is great. We get a lot of calls on the existing colors, so it's pretty exciting for our customers to know that you're going to be coming out with some new colors going forward. So anyway, we have people popping in, asking questions. You know, let me see. The first one is, how do you use your textiles in your interior design projects? Thank you to whoever sent that question in. 
styles. I use a lot of other people's. As a decorator, I, you know, inevitably you're looking at lots of different things. I love textiles. So I'm endlessly looking at other people's textiles, not with a view to kind of saying, oh, what should I be doing? But more, how can I use that? So for me, for decorating, I have a different hat on. I want to do the best for a client. I've started with a tiny collection, which I'm building up. And I'm going to produce a collection that will provide a complete look. But, you know, that takes time and thought and I don't want to compromise on the aesthetic. So that that is something that's a, a process in a sense. So I use textiles in I would like to use depends really on the remit from the client, what they want, what co colours they want. Some, uh, But I almost always mix in antique textiles, smaller quantities of those textiles. I was saying you can only get in a pillow sized piece or enough for a chair. So I use those. Um, and I, I use I often will buy antique textiles and dye them to tone. So I'll find maybe a contemporary textile and then I'll print something to go with it or I'll get something embroidered to go with it. So I do a lot of my own work to go with things. So if, if there's a gap, I, I will make things in a sense, not necessarily something I sell commercially in big quantities, but I will do very bespoke work for interiors. That's pretty exciting. I like that. So oh, another question coming up here. OK, this is a good one. People are continuing to spend more time in their homes. How do you think this has and will continue to change uh, the textiles we are bringing into our homes and design with? I'm very busy over the last year. I think at the beginning of COVID, people certainly in Europe, people thought it would be quiet, but actually it's been the opposite. People have been very busy and wanting to make their homes nice. And I think, so there's been an intense period of decoration but I think also that there's been a big shift online where people haven't been able to go into showrooms. And in some ways, that's good in that people have been able to look at more ideas. They've taken more time. But I think also there has been an emphasis on things that catch your eye that are very strong. And I think there is no substitute for seeing a real textile. I would so recommend people go to a showroom like Rosselli, look at things, look at the textiles, get a returnable, try it at home, but see and feel what you're buying first too. I think for me, that's very important. That's kind of counter trend in some ways, but I think, you know, getting professional advice, that this is not a planted answer, by the way, it's what I really believe, you know, go to, go to, go to Rosselli, go and look at textiles. These people have so much experience and go and see them, feel them, touch them. And, you know, if you're as a decorator looking at a wholesale place, it, in a wholesale environment, you know, and you feel passionate about it, you will translate that to your client, which is very important, I think. Wow, that's very good. Um, let me just scroll and see what we have here. Okay. Where do you plan to travel next for inspiration for your upcoming projects and collections? where do I plan to travel next if you stop there I'd say anywhere I haven't been anywhere I've had two nights out of London in the last six months so I probably like a lot of you I'm fairly desperate to go anywhere but I think the first place I will go I know is to my house in France which has been published in quite a lot of magazines it's kind of many of you will have seen images of it it's a, an old house with a lot of color on the walls a lot of pattern a lot of antique textiles I haven't seen them since August so I will really look forward i am really looking forward to going there in three four weeks to spend summer time there to source i will source antique textiles i have a network of old ladies who phone me up and say j'ai ça uh, j'ai trouvé ça pour vous so i will i will go and you know meet those people and kind of have a coffee and talk talk 19th century hemp which is great and uh, of, of the textile variety and kind of go off and and then I will go to as soon as it opens up I will go to Istanbul I need my fix of Turkish coffee my pomegranate juice which is part of what inspired my new design the pomegranate that is everywhere I love kind of from from Granada to Seville to to Istanbul so I yeah I they're they're the two destinations I will go to next excellent excellent did you have any specific design uses in mind when developing this collection? Um, or any collection, actually, I'll add to it. I have to say, well, going back a step, I think for any collection, it's because of the way in which I've started my textiles, it's been more driven by curiosity rather than, I, I want things to be practical and usable, but I haven't said you have to have this in this space, but I like to think that they, lots of my designs work together and they're sort of, it's beginning to fall into places. I find my 
voice in a sense as a decorator and as a through decorating and as a textile designer I think it's coming together so that you can use different groups of them or play around with a lot of the patterns and feel sure that they will work. Grenadine I think is kind of I think with a mood to COVID, it's a kind of comforting pattern. There's a nod to something slightly more traditional than some of, say, Demetra or some of the kind of funkier weaves of prints I've done. But I find it a very comforting weave in terms of texture. We spend a lot of, it's very usable, it's very practical. And the colors, which again, I would say, you know, are not showing up on screen as well as they might at either end, but they're bright, they're fresh, they're cheerful, they're positive, they're uplifting. So I would say you can use them anywhere. You know, decorators cover your clients' walls in them. I'd love that, but you can do that. It would, we'd all love that. It would work for that. But yeah, Philip's looking very excited at that, but that's good. So, but it, it's, I think you can use them for a poster. I plan to a poster my couch at home in probably in Amani and do some pillows in grenadine mi mixing the colors and then kind of just play around with it it's versatile for bedrooms dining rooms you know wherever i think you could it's fresh it's pretty and it's very versatile and practical and i think that that's a very strong point especially with things opening back up after you know being locked up inside to have something as fresh and happy and colorful as this i think people will respond quite well to it it's Everybody, it seems everybody's looking to change the homes they've been in for the past year plus. So that's pretty exciting. Do you have any design use, specific design uses in mind when designing any collection or any design of yours? Yeah, I, I, the things you always think about, because I do a lot of accessories as well. I sell a lot of pillows. I sell a lot of you know, embroideries, smaller textiles, uh, textiles made from pillows, made from antique textiles and upholstering footstools and so on made from older textiles. So I'm looking at kind of bigger areas like drapes and couches to cover. You're looking at things that will be, so you're looking at kind of, will it drape? Is it how much can people sit on it? What sort of use is it for? Is it for the soccer team watching the TV or is it for a kind of smart form, formal what we call a drawing room so you know you you do think about uses that i'm very practical as i've said i i want to think you know people can use this so it's not so delicate that it will fade in strong sunlight and if it will i'll say but that's more for pillows but for big ticket items you you want them to work right beautiful question for me here you have um a great and beautiful woven uh, line the end with a few prints in the collection. You plan on expanding on the printed textiles within your collection. You do both so well that this kind of sword of Damocles hanging over my head, which is the minimum hundred meter. So, so I, I, I think I'm much more. I know I'm much more confident about it now. So we are working on prints. It will be the tenth anniversary this year. It was the tenth anniversary in January just past of the Egyptian Revolution, which is a sort of interesting crucible for the seeds of my business to start from. So it will be ten years this fall since I actually cut up my first pillow and gave it to the dry cleaner down the road to make up. So I think I would like to do an anniversary print for that. But me being me, I keep looking. I have somebody working with me now in the business who's very experienced and very brilliant at it. She's not here now, but she's very helpful. And I keep saying. I've got a new design for a print. I'd really like to do that. And then the next day there's something else, but some, I'll have a moment when the light bulb lights and it's like, that's what we're doing. But I'm, it's something I'm very much working. Prints are very much something I'm interested in. That's great. Do you have any plans to do a book? I want to keep going with my journey before I start writing a, a memoir kind of thing. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm having too much fun. That's it's going to be quite the series of books with all the travels that you've done. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Well, let me see if we have any more questions. I think I've answered or asked them all and you've answered them. This has been wonderful. Do you want to give us an, a little inside question? What's next for you now that things are opening up other than travel? Um. Textiles, I've turned my hobby into my living in a sense. So, you know, guess guess what? Guess what I'm going to look for on holiday? I just love textiles. I'm, you know, my house is covered in them. My children are told, you know, this they, from babies, they're used to it. It's, it is my total passion. I love textiles. So 
it'll be something textile related with a, a nice glass of wine in the south of France or a coffee somewhere in Istanbul, but it'll, I'll be there with a textile somewhere and a good book probably. Well, that's great because your passion definitely comes through with your collections and everything that you do. And we're so excited to have you here in the Roselli showroom, open to the trade. Our coll your collection is hanging and today we'll be putting up the grenadine design so uh, customers can come in. We have plenty of memos. Um, and thank you everybody that joined us today. We appreciate your time. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And Susan, thank you so much. And a great pleasure. Thank we'll you for see listening. You in person one of these <laughs> upcoming days. You, you bet. With no Otty, my dog, but I'll definitely, I'd love, I'd absolutely love to come. And thank you everyone for listening. It's been a, a, a total pleasure. And I love working with Roselli. It's, you're such a great team. All right.